In this demo, you'll learn how FICO Analytic Modeler Scorecard Professional, powered by Xeno, or Scorecard Pro for short, supports the requirements of the experienced analyst with an intuitive, easy-to-use point-and-click interface that lets you converse freely with your data rather than fretting over your programming skills. First, you log into Scorecard Pro using your favorite Internet browser. We support Firefox, Chrome, and Internet Explorer. Once you sign on to Scorecard Professional, in-depth training material is available through the Scorecard Pro Support tab. Guides, detailed videos, and white papers are all located here. To navigate a project within Scorecard Professional, you'll use the six tabs on the left. We'll be working in the Consumer Credit Risk Demo Project, where we'll build a model to predict default risk for a retail revolving loan portfolio. We're on the Project tab, where you can create projects, edit and delete projects, and provide other users permissions to your project. Once you've created a project, you can import data in or export data out. Most of your time will be spent in the top three tabs. You can explore your existing variables and generate new ones using prepackaged operators. In the Analyze tab, you can generate packaged general purpose analytic and model evaluation reports and specify filters. And in the Model tab, you can create predictor profiles and models. Let's briefly examine the Explore tab, where you can view and generate variables. The Explore tab allows us to see a thumbnail view of all the columns of data we imported into the project. We're viewing the first 25 of 38 imported variables. We're interested in modeling the binary performance or target variable called risk flag. In the notes, we see that the values of zeros are loans that defaulted, and ones represent loans that are non-defaults. We also have a second continuous performance variable, interest revenue, that will allow us to build a revenue model or use Scorecard Pro's multiple performance capability to build a revenue-tuned risk model that improves revenue prediction without sacrificing risk in a single score. You can generate new transformation variables using packaged operators that don't require learning a syntax. For example, using the system operator, you can generate a random number ranging from 0 to 9. Using the date time one variable operator, you can generate a time since application date using your units of choice. We've chosen months. Once you've generated and viewed the transformed variables, you can output both imported and transformed variable statistics directly into a Microsoft Excel document in order to meet the stringent documentation requirements of regulatory agencies. Now that we've generated all variables of interest, we'll move to the Model tab. Here we'll start by creating a risk classing, or binning profile, of all candidate predictors for our performance variable, risk flag, using our observation level sampling weight to factor up the sample to the population. The binnings will allow us to profile all candidate predictors against default risk prior to building the model. As the profiles are created in the background, we can start reviewing the results. We click on the first variable on the predictor list, applicant age, to see the result of an automated default risk binning using one of three binning algorithms inside Scorecard Pro. You can choose to interactively group the bins, ungroup the bins, undo your action, relabel the bins, or impose coefficient pattern constraints that can be optionally applied during model optimization. The bar chart labeled WOE for weight of evidence shows that as age increases, the likelihood of being a good account also increases. In this variable, applicants from 42 to 47 years old are a neutral risk. Those at below 28 are a much worse risk, while those 58 or older are a much better risk. We can look at up to three performance variables at a time in each predictor profile. Let's add interest revenue and see how it looks when we recount the data on the predictor applicant age. Here we see a different pattern. The loans most likely to generate interest revenue range between 32 and 58, while younger and older applicants generate less revenue. 
we can take advantage of this difference in predictive patterns later when we build our revenue-tuned risk model. As with variable statistics, you can also choose to output all or a subset of predictor profiles into a Microsoft Excel document. We can sort the list of predictors by information value, with the strongest predictors on top. Then, we can select all candidate variables with a meaningful information value as candidates for the Scorecard Pro stepwise modeling algorithm. If a few variables, like existing scores, are not candidates, they can be set to Step 2, which will compute their marginal contribution but not optimize them. Priority levels can be set to consider less desirable variables as priority B or C, so that they are considered for inclusion only after all priority A variables have been included. Now we are ready to build out our risk model, using the risk binning library as our specification. Within the model specification screen, we can choose what variables we want in the model manually or have the algorithm select them for us by running a stepwise model. The globe spins as the model runs. We can check the log to determine the progress of the run, and we can take notes on the page to document our thinking as we build out this model. When the globe stops spinning and the scorecard completes its predictor selection, we get back a model and a number of pages of diagnostic information. We're on the model page now, which shows us some common binary outcome model performance measures, like the optimized logistic R-squared, which is simply the normalized log likelihood value ranging between 0 and 1. Also included is the KS, and the score value at which it is maximized, and the ROC area, or AUC, and the GINI. The predictor contribution exhibits the strength, in LR squared scale, of the step 1 predictors that made it into the model, and the relative strength of step 2 predictors on margin to the step 1 model. In this summary page, we observe the standalone independent strength of each predictor, along with how much predictive content each contributes to the model. Additional diagnostic tests, significance test confidence levels, and marginal measures are displayed to ensure all predictors in the model provide significant, unique predictive content. The contribution of the Step 2 variables not included in the model should ideally be close to zero. For example, the contribution of the custom score we are trying to replace should be close to zero at the end of our model building exercise. The scorecard page displays the actual score formula. The sum of an intercept term plus the score weight, or coefficient, assigned to each bin of each model predictor. Here we can observe the actual score weights, or coefficients, assigned to each bin of each predictor. The model treats each bin as a binary indicator or dummy variable. In the case of complete independence between predictors, the score weight will equal the weight of evidence. Typically, due to correlation, the weight values will be a compressed version of the independent weight of evidence values. Note here that the nonlinear pattern of this predictor is captured nicely by the weights. One of the advantages of scorecards is that they can capture such nonlinear relationships, reducing both the transformations the analyst needs to make to approximate linearity and the number of variables required to capture the predictive content of the data. Clicking on View allows you to customize the columns you see in this display, for example, adding percentage to view the proportion of data falling into each bin. Scoring code can be output at the very bottom of the screen in a variety of co code formats, such as SAS, SQL, and as we show here, PMML. The KFOLD page displays the results of a cross-validation, ensuring that your model is not overfitting the data. Here we've run a five-fold cross-validation and display the averages and standard deviations for each performance measure. The Score Distribution tab shows how far apart the defaults, in dark blue, are from the non-defaults, in gold. The further apart the distributions, the stronger the score in separating the two performance classes. You can click on Odds to see if the score rank orders by default risk, and click on Residual to see if the data is being fit well across all score ranges 
in a probability scale. If it's preferable to convert the score into rounded integer values in a PDO or points to double odd scale, you can choose to rescale the scorecard by specifying the PDO value, here we select 20, and target odds at a specific score, say the population odds of 43.7 to 1 at a score of 200. In the Evaluation tab, you can test whether the model evaluates well on the fly for any selected subset of the data. Here we examine how well the model performs on an independent validation 30% of the data. Comparing development to independent validation, we observe modest degradation and default risk rank ordering. We can compare the ROC plots or the odds plots of this evaluation or run it again on a different evaluation sample. Clicking on the Explore tab allows us to launch SubPop Explore, an automated machine learning algorithm that uncovers and evaluates the best scorecard segmentation schemes that provide significant lift over a single scorecard. Clicking on the Output tab outputs all the scorecard information, the model plus all pages of diagnostics into a single tabbed Excel spreadsheet that meets the growing regulatory demands for transparent, well-documented models. Once we've evaluated our model, we may wish to make changes to it. You can do this by making a copy of the existing model, duplicating all specifications and corresponding results into a new globe. In this model, you may choose to promote a variable into the model, say debt ratio, or demote a variable from the model. You can request that one or more numeric variables be treated as continuous rather than binned, which will apply a single linear coefficient to the predictor, instead of a coefficient to every bin. You can also make any necessary operational changes to the binning schemes. For example, the business may decide that the different flavors of bank relationship must be grouped into yes versus NA or no. We can interactively group and relabel these bins directly from the model. Now we can run this model again, as good analysts taking note of our changes. All changes made in such a development process will be preserved across iterations of each model globe. If this latest model is now to our liking, we can mark it as such, and provide it a name reflecting its final production status, such as Final Risk Model followed by outputting both the scorecard documentation and scoring code for deployment. Or, you may now choose to take advantage of Scorecard Pro's more advanced objective options. From the parent model, you can create a child model with one of three objective options. The predictor contribution option allows you to expand or contract the contribution of one or more predictors. The combination performance allows you to balance two competing objectives into a single score. Performance inference invokes Scorecard Pro's packaged inference capability in cases where unknown performance, such as rejected loan applications, must be inferred from the data. With the competing objectives feature, Scorecard Professional allows you to reduce negative correlation by explicitly modeling the linear combination of two performance variables. The result is a score that is more actionable. In our example, we select revenue as our second performance in the risk model and give it a modest combination factor weighting of 0.1 and run the model. We will call this model the revenue tuned risk model. Comparing the performance of this model relative to that of its parent, we see a very minimal loss in performance. Evaluating the two scores based on risk using our 30% evaluation sample, we see that the revenue-tuned risk model is an equivalently good rank order of risk relative to the pure risk-based model. Turning to the revenue evaluation of the two scores, the lift curve shows us that we can get significant improvement on the revenue dimension using the revenue-tuned risk score. For example, at a 60% operating point, for all accounts at the score or above it, the average revenue per account identified by the pure risk model is roughly $450 per account. 
Using the revenue tuned risk model, the top 60% from a risk perspective generate an average revenue of $480 per account, representing a significant gain in revenue without incurring additional credit losses. This unique advanced feature is being used by our customers to balance a variety of competing objectives. Examples include response versus risk, charge off versus bankrupt, short term versus long term default performance, risk versus attrition or prepayment, and ability to pay versus risk. Any model important enough to share or reuse can be published into a common workgroup available to any other user in that workgroup. Packaged flexible reporting in the Analyze tab, like score comparison and adverse action reports, provide users with further tools to analyze their models. Hopefully, this brief tour of the Scorecard Professional application has given you a flavor for why, as one user puts it, Scorecard Pro frees up smart resources to really think about the business problem.